Well, as you can see, it snowed. I don't know if you can see, it's still snowing. It's been snowing. It snowed, started snowing yesterday, snowed all night. And, and most of the day today. So what I like to do, get the dog in here, come on, is uh, I like to find something and tear it apart. Come on, get in here, whenever it snows. At least that's what I did this time. And if you notice the blue rags there on the floor, then uh, probably contemplating what that means. That means I scraped my saddle. But that's not what this video is about. I wanted to show the inner workings of uh, the carriage, the apron, why I had everything off. Getting it off there ain't bad. All you have to do is you take these keepers off of both of these. And there's some pins that go in there. Just hollow roll pins, split pins, split roll pins. They're actually made to shear off. You pop them out. You got three bolts over here you take out. I found it's easiest. This one, this one, and then one down here in this corner. And then just slide the whole works out. Take your carriage and crank it over to here where I got them boards. Put some boards under it to help hold it up. Just to support it so it doesn't drop down. Take the bolts out of the top there. And then you can simply take that and shove it out of the way and grab this and bring it over to here. So, I figured I'd show the inner workings of this, so if anybody's having any issues, if they know how everything works inside, they'll be able to diagnose it before they ever look. Or, someday somebody might purchase one of these lathes and somebody has tore all this apart. It'd be a good reference for somebody to see how it goes back together. So, we'll, uh, I'll cycle through the different different things so you can see how everything works. We'll start with the thread lever. So we'll engage that and you can see how that opens and closes there. The split nut. And basically how it works is there's a pin that goes through and there's another pin in this piece in a, in a slot that I believe is milled off center. I don't think it's, it could be rounded but I don't think it is. But you can see how that kind of works in there. I can't see, but there must be something similar to that down underneath. Because both jaws are moving. And you'll notice something going on over here. What that is, is that's the interlock. It basically two functions. One function is once you engage the threads, it keeps you from switching the cross feed or to carriage feed. It won't let it move. Interlocks that. The other function is when you're not threading and you're using either cross feed or carriage feed, say we're using the cross feed, now that won't let it engage because it's out of that groove. You'll notice a screw on here. If you back that screw out, it was backed out when I got it. And if you come over here while the lead screw's turning and while this is either in cross feed or carriage feed, if you could push up on this like this and it tries to catch and engage because you can see it does try to close then that means you need to adjust this screw the only way to adjust that screw is you have to take the carriage off so if you if you actually have it off i highly recommend making sure you got that adjusted right before you put it on so that's the gist of the uh of the threading portion of the lead screw now let's take a look at the hexagon lead screw the one that actually drives for for feed cutting and it comes through here and of course passes through this and there's your hexagon shape and of course as it turns it turns this one thing i want to mention before i forget that screw or that hexagon piece whenever it passes through every time it passes through these here acts as a wiper or squeegee and squeegees any chips off in there. So eventually you're going to wind up with a pile of chips down there. So I would recommend if you never had your carriage off, I'd recommend eventually taking it off. This one was completely loaded with chips. I wish I would have taken a video of it. I might have some pictures. I'll put on there someday. But somebody was blowing all this off because I've had this thing for three years and you can see there's still no chips in here. There was a few right here that already cleaned out that, that dropped off. 
Uh, the quick change gearbox was completely, totally loaded with chips. Well, there's not one chip in that thing, and I've been using it for three years pretty much. So, somebody must have been doing some blowing. But anyways, back to the hexagon screw. Now, of course, it turns, and as it turns, it turns this, and this drives this bronze gear down here. It will pull us out of the way just to... Just to, for clarity. Of course, you got a couple bearings here, which I don't think that they ever go bad. It's a thrust bearing, but it's roller bearings. But anyways, as the worm gear turns, it turns this. Right now, the clutch is not engaged, so it's just barely rubbing. So, if we engage the clutch, or engage the feed, it'll actually, how it works here is... If you look, if you watch the cast iron gear here, you'll see it get pushed into the bronze gear. The bronze gear does not move. So I'm going to pull the, the feed lever handle. See how that, that's how that works. So we'll go ahead and engage that. Now our clutch is engaged. And now you can see more stuff going on here. But it's still, it's still between gears. It's not in, it's not in cross slide feed or it's not in carriage feed. So this gear is just spinning free. So now we'll engage it in the cross slide feed. Now if we turn this, you see how that drew up there. And these two gears here stay together all the time. It's just this gear here moves between this gear and this gear. Now if we go to, well, of course, one more piece to this puzzle, and that's this right here sets up there. That's how you get power up to here. And while, while I'm on that, if you look, never been in here and you're looking at the front of this, you're, you're thinking, what the devil was this for? All that is is a spindle to hold, uh, to hold this. That's all it is. It has the big nut and the screw in the middle. and That's so you, you're able to, this, it's threaded into here. You're able to screw that in or out and adjust, adjust the... Uh, where it falls at on here. So, you, you know, it might be like that. And then you'll have to pull it in or like this to exaggerate. You can get it right on center. That's that. Now let's look at the, the carriage feed, which will, right now it's in neutral. We'll engage that and you see how that drops down into place. And you actually see the oil run out of there. We'll get back to that in a minute. Now, if we turn this, you can see all kinds of stuff moving. So what you have is, is this mesh to this, this gear turning this gear, this gear turning this gear, which in turn has this shaft in the middle, which has splines on it. And these spline mesh up, splines mesh up to this gear. And of course, this gear is in the center. And this is your pinion gear, which rides under your rack. So that's how that works. Now, jump back to the oil so I don't forget. All of this in here is oiled. It, it constantly gets oil from the red, what's, what you fill it with. So when you turn it, it draws oil and lubricates all this. This here never gets no oil. So it's going to be dry if it's never, never been oiled and it's going to cause wear, which is what happened to mine. Now, I do believe you could get oil in there. If you took your your uh, oil can and stuck it in there and give it a couple pumps around the corner there, you should be able to squirt that. Uh, I think there's even enough room where you can stick it in that hole there with the lead with the lead screw in there. Even with the lead screw in there, I think there's a good three eighths gap around there. So you ought to be able to squirt some oil in there on that every now and again. I'm going to grease it up before I put it back together, but you still need to make sure you have oil on your bearings. Because what happened to this one, uh, let me turn it here and give you a good example. There's a real clear one right there. Need a pointer, use this ink pen. If you look closely at the top of this gear here, you'll see that it's a lot wider here than what it is here. What happened? is this pin here got severely wore on this side 
if I remember right, it all wore on this side directly facing this gear because it was constantly trying to push it away. And only one side of that pin wore. Well, that, it's just a pin in there, so it's pretty pretty easy to fix. I just made a new pin. This set screw there holds it in. And of course, new bronze bushings. And that took the play out of there. This one here, since you, when you turn it, it actually wore the shaft the whole way around. And I ended up, to fix that, I turned 13 thousandths off of the diameter. Luckily, the shaft was slightly bigger than the splines here. So I was able to turn 13 thousandths off and just make a custom bronze uh, bushing to put in there. And that tightened it up. But what that was doing is when I first got this thing, if you look at the position of the handle, I could move this thing like almost a half a turn before the carriage would move. It was like that much backlash. What was causing it is since these two bores were so loose, as soon as you started to turn it, instead of actually turning this, the first motion it would do was spread these two gears apart. And then once it spread them apart and pushed it against the sides of the, the wobbled out bores, then it would start turning it. So just by fixing those two items, I immediately got it from, from this much backlash to right now, if it was on there, I could show you, I got like that much probably. And most of that, I'd say probably 99% of that is coming from this board gear here and or the uh, saddle being wore. Because as a saddle wears, it's going to drop down. And when it drops down, it moves the pinion gear further away from the rack, which gives you some play. But honestly, as bad as that gear's wore, I'd say that little bit of play I got right there like that is probably just from that gear being wore. Now this this gear here is pretty wore too, but really it's not creating much play. If you, if you right here, if you look how much that's wobbling before it moves the other gear, about like that, if you look at how much that handle is moving, I mean, that's like nothing. But what I did is I went ahead and measured these two gears because I've reached, recently purchased, recently like two days ago, but then the snowstorm hit, so. But I re recently purchased a um, closing, a, what is it, 8540 horizontal mill. So eventually, on my first project is I'll make me a couple gear shifts. So I got all the dimensions made, uh, wrote down. I think I'm just gonna make this one and this one. And this one here, I'm gonna cheat when I make this bigger one. I'll just make the, the pitch diameter like 10 thousandths bigger and that'll take a lot of that play out. This one here, I'll just copy identical, identical. I may make one out of plastic just to make sure it, it fits good. And if it doesn't fit good, fit if it does not fit good, then I'll maybe increase the pitch diameter of that one. So that's that's about the gist of, of all the goings on in here. Uh, yeah, I think that's about all I wanted to chat about. So anyways, I'll hover over this thing. Well, I'll, do, I'll mention one, one more thing. I had thought about putting uh, ball screw covers on this, uh, spring spring screw covers or, or spring way wipe uh, cover. And that's just a, looks like a piece of banding strap that telescopes in and out. I thought about putting one of them. Well, I thought about putting two, but then I realized these holes are too close together. I don't think you could put two on but the threading screw doesn't isn't going to dump a lot of chips in there because you're not using it near as much. The feed screw is always, even when you're not using the power feed, it's still, every time you move the carriage back and forth, it's it's scooping the chips off of that and dumping them in there. So I thought about putting one of them over that. I think it might work. I, it's on my, on my to-do list. But anyways, we'll hover over this thing and give you a good look in case anybody ever buys one of these and somebody's got it tore apart they'll have a good reference to put it back together let me put, put this back into place so that's that's how everything should go so you got gear down here well that's your pin there here this is inserted into here i think it's a press fit because there's no there's no set screws in here but there is a keyway so they must have press fitted and put a keyway in there also 
at least I didn't see any keyways. Let's see some inner workings down in here to look at. See how all that all that goes. And there's your tuning fork. I call it a tuning fork. And there's another gear down in there. Of course, your bronze gear is in there. There may be something between this gear and the other gear. I don't know. Of course, you got your bearing. You got your race, your bearing, or race, flat race, on each side of this. And when you insert this together, you might have to kind of maneuver this around to get it in there. I didn't have any problems the first couple times I did it, but there's some of this stuff up here, and I think that's a pretty good view for anybody that ever buys one of these things in pieces that somebody started to work on to hopefully put it back together. Anyways, uh, hope this helps somebody. Uh, thanks for watching.